welcome to the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. Hello and welcome back to the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. I'm trying to hide my smile because I'm so excited. The Premier League is back. Not clapping. That, that's someone who's uh, not worried about their team's Premier League survival, isn't it? Well, that's why you're not clapping. Jack Collins, my main man, Fulham fan. Great to have you on the channel. It's his COP TV debut. How are you, bro? It's I'm great good. to have you here. It's great to be here, man. It's great to be here. We've been doing bits and bobs, but it's nice to be on, on, on your channels. So, it, yeah, bro. I'm excited. Let's, uh, Part let's get of, it. Um, the ranks, Fulhamish. I mean, you are Mr. Fulham, basically, aren't you? I'm trying my best. Um, you know, I'm sure there's people who will contend that, but I'm doing my best to, uh, to try, and, no, and, try and get the vibes. Clint Dempsey and you. Yeah, yeah you just, know, just boys. There. And Damien Duff. <laughs> and Damien um, Duff. An exactly. example. Yeah, and, to be fair. And, Finn, and Steve Finn. There we are. There's, there's one for, we, the, one for both Stevie of us. Finn, yeah, exactly. Guys, I don't know about you. Let us know in the comments. It's the Liverpool Open Night. Fulham versus Liverpool. It's the second game of the Premier League game week number one. Of course, Arsenal Palace play Friday night. But this one I am so excited for. It's a 12.30 kickoff. Traditionally, Liverpool haven't fared the best when it comes to a 12.30 kickoff. But we should mention, of course, and a massive shout out to our sponsors for this video, Betmates. Um, get involved with the link in the description now, now powered by Opta. So only the best data yeah. is, is available on the app. If you use our code COPTV5, you get five pound free bet after your paid pot, the first one. And if you click this here, this QR code, it takes you straight there without even having to click the link in the description, but do it anyway. Uh, and let's quickly go through my team, Jack. Um, now, obviously you can't pick more than four Liverpool players in the same team. So this one was a bit of a headache for me. Yeah. And I have consulted you on the team, but let's just run through it and you can see it on the screen now. Um, in goal, it's a seven aside team. So in goal, I've gone with Alisson. Yeah. Valid shout. Yeah, sensible. I feel like, like as long as you're guaranteed he's going to play, as long as that injury is definitely he's not playing. worried, then we're sweet. Well, I'm not sweet. You're you not are. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, won the Golden Glove last year. Um, has been saved really for most of pre-season to come into this game. Adrian's been playing. Let's not have that happen ever again, if I'm honest with you. But Alisson in goal. Um, Trent as well, I've gone for purely because of his... Uh, well, we all know about Trent, don't we? I yeah. Mean, massive danger for any team that we're playing against. Also, I think the other thing with that is that Fulham's right-hand side defensively is, is stronger than our left. And so anything coming down your right is probably worth okay. putting in. And I imagine, therefore, you've, uh, you, you've got another man in there coming down that right-hand side, but we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it I does do, mean actually. that I would, if I was going to attack on, and I'm sure you've gone the other way on, on a Fulham defender, I wouldn't, well, we only have two starting centre-backs and I'm terrified about both of them, to be honest. But, you know, on the right-hand side, Kenny Tete, international, we're not, there's a little bit of an injury concern. Kevin and Babu's come in, two good players. But I think going forward, we're going to try and attack that space as well. So Anthony Robinson probably makes sense well, you say sense that, there. but I've gone for Robinson. Yeah. Um, I've jiggled up uh, the kind of defence there with two wide players. Um, tell us a bit more about Robinson, because let's not forget, Fulham have been away from the Prem now for a year, just over a year. Um, it's great to have you back. I mean, me and you have spoken at back. length about how much I've had some great days and some bad days at Craven Cottage. But talk to us about Robinson. Yeah, um, we came in as kind of this speedster. And, you know, for a year, all we heard on every commentary, every time that he got the ball was linked with AC Milan once, you know. Um, and, and he was, <laughs> to be fair to him. But uh, signed for Fulham, US international. Um, very, very quick, good ball carrier down that left-hand side. Final ball sometimes a bit lacking, but offers that threat and offers that recovery speed as well. So, yeah, he's been a, it's been an interesting one. There are people that get frustrated with him because, you know, when you have a player like Mitrovic in the middle, you expect those deliveries to to be better. Um, but overall, I think what you're looking at with Robinson is someone who can get into those spaces, who will drive with the ball and, and has become a real outlet for Fulham. So, yeah, um, yeah. I, I think he might well thrive if he gets that space this season. Yeah, listen, um, that's why he's in the team this week. I actually won 20 quid on the Community Shield uh, <laughs> last week on Betmate. So I'm looking decent in that leaderboard. I can see some big names in that leaderboard already. The Red Men lads are there. Pajak, Machin's there. We've got Steve from the Red Men as well. So I'm looking to go above them. This is also a Liverpool-based company as well, I should say. That's what we like to do on the COP TV. See ya. The Hot Copics uh, podcast sponsored by Flux. Betmate, also a Liverpool-based company. Um, Let's talk about the midfield. I've gone captained Thiago. Mm. Uh, now, I know you know your football. You know how good a football player yes. Thiago yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was reports on the radio this week. Cascarino, I believe it was, said he's technically the best. In terms of technical ability, the best. He's almost talking about, forget the Premier League, ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, again, knowing that you know 
how good he is. How scared are you on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those, isn't it, where Thiago isn't necessarily the player that when you're looking at, oh my God, who's going to who's gonna hurt this Fulham team? The first player that comes to mind isn't Thiago. But sure. you know, we all know how good a, pu- a string puller he is at the base of that midfield and, and how much he can open teams up. And I think that that's what's interesting with Thiago is he's often the pass before the assist or the hockey assist, I think yeah. some people call it. The pre-assist. So, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> he's, a, he's a really, well, he's a technically unbelievable footballer isn't it there's no doubt about that someone who is just such a wonderful watch and such an aesthetically pleasing watch as well and it it makes me happy that he's finally kind of not overcome because I think that the difficulties were overplayed to be perfectly honest with you when he first arrived um but that kind of narrative has been dropped after after the last season yeah because it was nonsense wasn't it it? we all know how technically gifted he is we all know how brilliant he is um and what he's done wherever he's been uh, and, and he's shown that again. So, oh, I mean, on the top, in, in the kind of fear factor scale, I would say he's probably lower down than some others, but that doesn't mean that he's any worse of a... He's the a, guy that supplies exactly. the guys that will really hurt exactly. you. Exactly. There you go. Exactly. He's, he's my captain this week. Don't forget on bet, mate, you actually get points for tackles and interceptions. Right, okay. And Thiago, one of the things I've been most impressed about since he's come to the club is the way he can retain the ball, but also win it back yep. in a really confined space. You saw how well he did against... Silver and Rodri at the weekend yeah, yeah. where he's just bullying them off the ball. So again, points for that. And Thiago is our main guy for that, him and Fabinho. So that's why he's in as captain. Um, Pereira, Andres Pereira. Uh, we've seen him at United. He's, he's at Fulham Well, now. we haven't seen him well, at United. have yeah. we though? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to ask some of the United fans that. But he's in the midfield for me. Um, what can you expect from him this season? Well, I think it's going to be interesting because obviously we lost Fabio Cavalier. Um, Sorry about that. Yeah, no, 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 no harm. What a player, by the way. Done. Thank you very well, much. I'm, I'm, glad you gonna, I'm glad he's going to. I'm glad he's going to thrive. He's gone somewhere. He's going to get minutes. He's going to, you know, kick on and, yeah. and become the player. I think he, he is going to be. I, I think he's going right to the pinnacle. So oh, mate, he's going there's, to, as um, Harry Redknapp once said, he's going right to the top. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> um, so we needed someone to kind of come into that role. I think his that role for us, which was more of a ten last season, he played as the most advanced of a midfield three, but a lot of the time he was behind, you know, off the striker, running beyond Mitrovic yeah. at times. I think that role is going to slightly change. Um, Andreas Pereira is, is the player that they've asked to come in and, and, and kind of fill that spot for now. Um, he's slightly more defensively able, I would suggest. Not that Cavaleo isn't a, a very hard-working, intense, tech, you know, presser and, and also a very tenacious tackler, it which really is, is, I think, why Klopp likes him so yeah. much. Um, but... You know, Andres has come in, he's a brilliant set piece taker um, and he's someone who is going to work in there. And I think he has a point to prove, a bit of a chip on his shoulder. And look, he might not have been good enough for Manchester United. I don't think he probably was. And he's had other loan spells where he didn't where quite he work year? out. He was at Flamengo last year, which Flamengo. was all right, apart from he made a massive mistake in the Libertadores final. Um, but his Lazio spell didn't work out all that well. You know, there have been other spells that haven't worked. I think he's coming in with a point to prove. He's got a new permanent home. I, I yeah, think this has to work useful. for him, though, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. I, but season... I, I do think, you know, his ability to, to create things from the middle, but his, also his, his dead ball ability will make things happen for Fulham this year. So, yeah, I'm hopeful about that one. Mm, there you go. Pereira in that midfield for me. Vice-captain, I've gone with Mo Salah. Um, I would have captained him. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I can still change Five goals in the last that. five... Uh... This, is my, <laughs> this is what I was <laughs> going to say. Fixtures. So, in the last five opening day fixtures, he scored on every game. Um, let me try and name them for you. There was Watford, West Ham... There was, ah, there was a, there was, there There's was a couple, ones. yeah. Well, there's five. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed out a few, but Mo Salah starts, um, gets the goal against City last week. Um, be silly not to have him in. He's the FPL fantasy football player dream, really, yeah. isn't he? Uh, yeah. So n- not much needs to be said on him. And then Mitrovic up front. I've gone with him as well. Now, how many goals? 44? 43 goals. 43? Well, 44 in all comps, but 43 in the championship. How season. many... So, 43 goals in all comps in the champ. What does that translate into in the Prem? Because he's been in the Prem before. I think 15. 15? I think 15 is a good is a good aim. I would say maybe like 10 non-penalty goals would okay. be a good aim for Alexander Mitrovic this season. I think, look, last time out, he didn't really get a go under Scott Parker. Parker yeah. wanted a player who was going to press ferociously, who was going to try and get in behind. That's not Mitrovic's game. Yeah. Um, now, Fulham didn't score any goals, which was part of the problem and probably why Parker should have played Mitrovic yeah. at all. But you look at it and you go, OK, he played Cavalero. Cavalero scored three, I think. Not quite what you need from your, your starting centre forward. This time, this team is built around Alexander Mitrovic. The time before, under Slavisa Jakanovic, and in that kind of weird season where we had three managers, he scored 11. 
And I think that this Fulham team are better than them and also built more around Mitrovic. So I'm going for 15. Uh, it's probably so you'd be a, happy with 15 to yeah, 20. Yeah, I think so. I think if I think if Alexander Mitrovic scores 15 goals, Fulham will stay up. Okay, massive shout from Jack. On the bench, I've got Adrian Van Dyke, uh, Knockart, and Cavalero. Uh, let us know how you feel about this team. I Are you promise confident? you those two last ones won't play. So. Well, that's why they're on the bench. Uh, I had to put them in. That's how it works. Um, but really interested to see how you guys fare with your bet, mate. Don't forget, if you use our code, you get a £5 free bet. You can't beat that. Trust me. Get involved with the link in the description or the QR code. Uh, right, let's talk about the game itself. This game steeped in history. We've played each other so many times. Some really, as I mentioned, some great games, some poor games as well. I was at the famous Yossi Benayoun last minute winner in April 2009. It's also back there in April, sorry, October 09, we lost 3-1. And if you look at the last time we played each other, it was a Fulham win at yeah. Anfield. Yes, it was. Mario Lamina, the goal yes. scorer. Um, so there's a blast from the past and, for everybody. And we drew at Craven Cottage that Cottage. year as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No wins yeah. in three for Liverpool. Okay. Yeah, I mean, look, you have to take all of that with a pinch of salt. You look at the Liverpool lineup that day. Yeah, it, you it know, was poor. It, I mean... Four players, I would say, who are not part of the Liverpool rotation played in that game. And you look at the Reese Williams, Re Nat Phillips, Nat Phillips, Jadon Shakiri, um, and Nico Williams played. Oof. So, so that was. With yeah. all due respect, that's a weaker team. It is. Uh, I guarantee. <laughs> With no fans in the but stadium. There were still as well. seven. There were still seven yeah, of, yeah. that are still part of this. Or well, Vine Adams not there anymore, yeah, yeah. but was definitely part of the st standard Liverpool rotation. So it was a weakened team, and it had a, a very weak centre back core, as I agree. But kept a clean sheet, which is kind of nuts, frankly. Um, we didn't keep many of them. But it, it, it's, it's one of those games you look at and you go, okay, that's well in the past. This is a very different occasion. This is a very different Liverpool and a very different Fulham, to be perfectly honest with you. A Fulham that have come from the championship with a very attacking, you know, very principled, we want to get the ball down and play football approach. How that translates into the Premier League is going to be the very big question about this. And it's all good smashing the championship and smashing records for Mitrovic scoring 43 goals. But we've seen Norwich do that before. And look, I hate this Norwich Fulham comparison because I think that you can look at plenty of teams who have, who have struggled between the divisions. But I think what we, you can kind of take from it is that bat battering the championship isn't enough. You know, running yeah. away with the league in, in, in the tier below isn't enough. You have to be able to adapt your system and your philosophies and all of that to fit the Premier League. And that's the big question for Fulham at the start of this season. There's a kind of kind of school of thought, I think, among Fulham fans that when you're talking about this first game, you know, oh, it's terrible. We've got Liverpool. It's, it's as bad as it could get. You know, this is one of the hardest games we could possibly have handed. And they're right. But also, I think there's an element of, OK, we haven't finalised our squad yet. We're not hitting, we're, you know, the chances of you winning points in these games against Liverpool and City are kind of minuscule across the board. So if you play them first, when everything's kind of a bit up in the air, you're not risking playing them you yeah, know, in October when you do have your when you do have that rhythm and you really do want to beat the teams around you. you know, Fulham, like you say, we beat you and, and drew with you last time round and still got relegated. It's not good enough to beat, you know, get the odd result against the top teams. In order to survive, you've got to beat the teams around you. Mm -hmm. And that's what Fulham failed to do last time. So I don't want to say it's a free hit because there aren't free hits in the Premier League. You have to go out and, and believe you can win every game and there's no point getting promoted if you don't come into it and, and want to want to you know play a part and, and be part of the season and, and make a difference. But I think that as timings go for a game, it's not the end of the world unless you absolutely hammer us. Yeah. Well, listen, I don't think that's going to happen. Listen, football is based on paper and off paper. Yeah. On paper, could I have asked for... It sounds very disrespectful, but could I have asked for a better fixture? Yes, I would have preferred for it to be at home. <laughs> yeah. But yes, but off paper, we have to consider the fact that you're at home. Yeah. You're just back in the Prem. Yeah. The noise is going to be big. Haven't you just had your stadium expanded as yeah, well? Yeah, so there's still half a stand kind of missing, but the bottom tier of the Riverside is, okay. is back. So there will be South fans on all four sides again, which there is something. There you go, which, is, which we haven't seen for a while. So if you add all these things up, this could, it could. And the early kickoff, as you, as you mentioned at the exactly top. Exactly right? that. So there's about four things there that to me say this isn't going to be an easy game. Fulham. I mean, yes, we, we've had some wins there, but notoriously, it's never been an easy place for anyone to go to, I don't think. No, I think the cottage, you know, for years and for that 13-year spell in the Premier League was, you know, we, we stayed up a lot of the time based on our home form. Yeah. It, was, it was a tricky place to go. Now, obviously, over the last two campaigns where we've been relegated twice, it hasn't been that. And, and teams have found it too easy to come to Fulham and get results. Um, but if that's going to change then the attitude and you know around what the cottage is and about getting those results at home has to change as well. And obviously the last 
campaign didn't have fans in it and that affected everyone in different ways. Um, but I think that when you look at it and you go, okay, how does, how does this pan out? Then, then things have to be different this time around. And I think that the, the desire and the will to, to make that happen is there this year. Yeah. No, listen, I agree. I, I'm really interested to see how far Fulham can go this season. Um, and, you know, when you look back on what's, what's been an incredible history at the club, you look at the high points of the European final, et cetera, et cetera. So, listen, so many stories when it comes to yes. Fulham. I mean, you've spoken a lot about them. <laughs> Let's get a score prediction from yourself, man, because I don't want to... You know, give too much head of a shine heart. to us. I want to, <laughs> as uh, yeah, I want, I want both. Do you want a head or a heart? My my heart says one or my head yeah. says two nil. Okay, well I like that. Listen, as I mentioned earlier, get involved in the comments. Let us know what you think the score is going to be. I am going for. What am I going for, Jack? What should I go for? <laughs> I do don't know. You have to tell me. You tell me. I'm going to go for a tough, hard fought. Seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here we go. We scored no, enough going... sevens last year. We know it's about time we got handed some of them. Tough, hard fought, three-one away win. Uh, quick question: Do you think Fabio Carvalho sees yeah. some play? Yeah. And Harvey Elliott, both ex-Fulham players. Of course. Yeah, I, I think Fabio will um, definitely. And actually, to be honest, I think both of them will. The five subs rule helps them both. Um, I yeah. think, and I think we've seen in pre-season that Klopp is willing to to throw them in and and, and give them the games that he thinks they need. And I think they'll get both get serious minutes across the okay. course of this season, across all competitions, of course. But I do think that there's a, an element of some people thought that Carvalho was brought in as kind of one for the future. I think there's, no, no, I think he's very much one for the now. And now he's not going to start week in, week out. No one thinks that, but I think he'll get more minutes than people expected. There we go. You've heard it from the Fulham fan himself. Jack Collins um, is going for a narrow Liverpool win hopefully for us. But listen, bro, amazing to have you on the Man, channel. It's been a real pleasure. Dave, you make me. sure you go and follow him. Excellent when it comes to not only just Fulham, European f world football. <laughs> I won't even just say European. Some of the stuff you come out with goes over my head. So make sure you follow this guy for amazing content and make sure you download Betmate too. We'll see you outside after the game. Take care. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just before you go, don't forget, give us a like, drop us a comment and subscribe to the Cock TV. The voice of football's most famous stand.